Hello and welcome to a review of the game Jet Set Knights. Its developer is FobT Interactive and its publisher is Rattalaker Games, which I want to thank for providing me a review code for this title. So, first off, I'm going to go with the score that I gave this game, which was a 6.3 out of 10. And I will explain why in this video. So first off, the completion estimate for this game is a 1 to 2 hour completion. And it was released on the 23rd of September 2020 for a price of $9.99. Which is a little more on the expensive side for a Rattlaker title. But with it being an indie developed platformer, that's always expected. There are currently 12 achievements in the game and one of them is a little bit buggy to actually unlock. The rest are relatively easy. The achievements are for mostly shooting a bunch of arrows, beating a bunch of bosses and defeating enemies. The only other achievement in the game is to find a thousand coins. Now, no one is absolutely sure how this is done, whether it needs to be done in one level, in one sitting, whether it's cumulative, but it's going to be one of those things that I am going to mention in this video a little later on. So first off, the art style of the game, pixelated art, is always great. Reminds you of old retro games. And the enemies have different health, making it interesting to actually go ahead and look at all the different enemies throughout the game. Because they're not always the same in all the different levels. You can defeat an enemy faster by jumping on top of them, like a Mario-styled Goomba. There are bosses, what I believe to be every five waves in the game and once you beat that boss you can actually quit out and go on to the next level and go ahead and beat that boss for the achievements. There is no specific requirement for you to stay in the level after you've beaten one of the bosses as it will just carry on until you die. If I could suggest anything it would be to upgrade your health as even if you have one hit point left and you do manage to get a level up and you upgrade your health you'll get all of your hearts back plus the one that you've just upgraded. You can go ahead and place down some wooden barriers either side of the princess what it seems to be at the bottom or the girl to defend her and you can upgrade those the more you collect more wood but they do become more expensive. The other things you can put down are these little turret towers and they will help defend with you shooting at the enemies as they pass by. There are other power-ups that you can actually access in the game by killing a certain amount of enemies you will see them spawn in along with the metal required to place down the turrets which can be upgraded like the wood. Unfortunately you cannot defeat the portals that the enemies are spawning out of as this will be infinite as far as I know. But onto the coins. Now the coins are actually a bit of a pain as to get a thousand coins you will find yourself quitting out and checking the stats menu multiple times to see how many you actually have. Now for me, I had to collect about three or four thousand coins before this actually unlocked the achievement as it seems to be a little bit buggy and people have complained about it before but it is one of those things that I don't think are ever going to get fixed and if they do, it'll be a very long time before they do actually do get fixed. The bosses are very unique and this is a very Nintendo styled game and I'm not sure quite how they got away with some of the enemies and bosses that you'll see throughout the game as one is literally Donkey Kong and the others are extremely close resembling characters to other characters in Nintendo games. The different abilities that the arrows have like the fire and ice can be extremely helpful for longer range damage and the sword does only a little bit of damage but you can actually gain more damage from using your different what I'm going to call artifacts and you collect these by collecting the big coin that ends up in the middle of the platform after you collect 100 coins you collect that big coin and you can use it in a arm bandit style machine that you saw at the start of the video. This will get you an artifact and you can go ahead and put it on your character and it'll give you extra health, faster movement, but it can also decrease some of your things as well. So you've got to look at what the modifiers actually say before you go ahead and just put anything on. The character to me reminds me a lot of the guy from Jump King for some reason, and I'm okay with that entirely. This game is actually a bunch of fun the more and more you play it, but due to the difficulty and level of the learning curve, for understanding how to beat the bosses and how to defeat all the different enemies and make sure that you actually get to those bosses is a little steep. The music and overall sound of the game is pretty good as well as the animations, but the reasons why I've given it a lower score than what would usually be considered an average score as a 7 is due to the reasons I have explained why. But besides that, you do actually get quests from the girl 
herself, if you go over and hover over her and hold down, you will get a quest that will tell you what you need to do. And upon completing that quest, I believe you get one of the big coins. But that is going to do it for now, guys. That's going to be my review of Jet Set Knights. I hope you've all enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next one.